The very act of pedagogy, that is teaching, is persuasion. In other words, every teacher is a salesman. And the best salesmen in the world are so called by the number of actual sales that they make. Bringing into the sphere of teaching, if my students cannot buy into the concepts and ideas that I present to them, then I haven't sold, then I haven't done my job of teaching. Teaching is largely about persuasion. So the extent to which I'm able to teach is the extent to which I can persuade them. For example, I remember teaching a topic about sales to a group of young people once. I put the cell on the board and they went, oh, so me, so what? What's this? How is this going to help my life? What am I, what am I on about talking about a cell? How is this going to help my life? And then do you know what I did immediately? I put on a clip of Jeremy Kyle's show. That got their attention. And it was a clip about paternity check. So I said to them, how come Jeremy Kyle is able to confidently say to this man, you are not the father. You are the father from a piece of paper. They said to me, oh, because they've done the DNA. And I went, what is the DNA? They began to talk about the DNA. Where is it located? In the nucleus. Where is the nucleus? In the cell. I said, so do you see the reason why we need to look at this? Because some of you are going to become forensic science in the future. Forensic, forensic scientists in the future. Some of you will work with Jeremy Kyle or have your own show. At least you need to understand the basis of what's the component of a cell. Needless to say that they never questioned my teaching again. Needless to say that they kept focused and they all went on to achieve good results. So it's about persuasion. It's about salesmanship. A good teacher is a good salesman. <clears throat> but if I'm able to sell, that's what I've explained here by, by and large, if I'm able to sell or teach some strange ideas to a group of young minds who would naturally question every other sentence that I make to the extent that they can follow my line of thought, see the logic in or of the concept, and then retain and recall the same whenever required, then I have done my job. As, as I found out later, my strategy was working. I began to use them in every classroom, in every school. However, I would tweak it here and there as the tone of the classroom or the school demanded. I soon became a pro at classroom management, and then I became the expert in getting even the most disruptive students to stay focused and engage with learning. With that, I began to achieve fantastic results. However, I did not really know why my strategy was so efficient. I just knew it was working. And every school I went to, it worked. Every young person I dealt with, they liked my strategy, they listened to me, they began to achieve results. I didn't know why it was working. I just knew it was working until last year. Something happened to me last year. In my further study and research, I came across the amazing field of neuroscience. That is the study of the human brain. I began to understudy Dr. Caroline Leaf, Dr. Martha S. Burns, and a few others. And I came across the reason why my strategy was so efficient. And in one word, it is neuroplasticity. I'm going to play a short clip. Neuroplasticity, to put it shortly, is the science that tells us that the human brain can be changed. So. What, the reason why my strategy was so efficient was because I was transforming the brains of the young people. I was changing their brain. I was carrying out neuroplasticity 